Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 26th, and this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm glad you're joining us for this circle of prayer. If it's your first time, relax. I do most of the work. I only ask that you keep your ears, your heart, and your mind open. So this is the last and final week of Easter. Sunday is Pentecost. And Pentecost initiates the longest season in the church year, the season of ordinary time when we focus on the life and conduct of the church. Thus, it's appropriate that our Old Testament lessons for this week are all about leadership within God's people. Jesus also moves from teaching to acting, from the Sermon on the Mount to a collection of miracle and deeds of might. The stories now focus more on how Jesus enacts the new age rather than how he explains it. Perhaps we'll see our own leaders, our own communities, even ourselves in these lessons. After the lessons, we'll pray in three ways, using the prayers from the Presbyterian Daily Office of Worship, and then um, petitions that have been presented by our friends at Second Presbyterian Church. We'll join in the Lord's Prayer together, and with a final blessing, our morning prayers will be complete. The service should take about 15 minutes. So let's be called to prayer by words from Scripture. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. From Psalm 5. I pray to you, O Lord, you hear my voice in the morning. At sunrise, I offer my prayer and wait for your answer. Our Old Testament lesson today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16. Now, following the leadership of Joshua, as the people entered into the promised land, a new leader, a spiritual leader, a man of God, a prophet, Samuel, advised the new people settling. They requested a king, and though God was not pleased by the request, a king was granted and Samuel was sent to anoint Saul as king over Israel. But Saul's leadership was not commendable, and God has withdrawn his support. So God now sends Samuel to find the next king. Listen, this is recorded in the 16th chapter, verses 1 and then from 6 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Now fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Now when they came, he looked on Elab and thought, Surely, The Lord's anointed is now standing before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look only on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortal sees, that they look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abindad and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. So Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And Jesse said, Well, there remains yet one, the youngest, but he's out keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him here, for we will not sit down until he comes. He sent and he brought him. Now this son was ruddy and had beautiful eyes 
and was handsome. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of the, his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Then Samuel sent out and went to Ramah. So the characteristics of the, that matter the most to God is the quality of a leader's heart. The leader may be physically fit, attractive, and even charismatic, but without a good heart, such an individual cannot lead God's people. Now, David, despite his many failures, managed to maintain a good heart. He knew how to confess his sins, how to repent, be disciplined, and to continue in God's grace. A good heart was the necessary in element in leadership. Now in the Gospel of Matthew, we notice there are several excuses to resist Jesus' new way of living. There's family commitments and self-securing. There's life storms. These are three that are mentioned in our text. But by and far, the most devastating is fear. Listen, I'm reading from Matthew 8, verses 18 through 27. Now, when Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own. And Jesus got into a boat and his disciples followed him. And a windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But Jesus was asleep. They went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. Why? We are perishing. And Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. And they were amazed, saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Here ends the reading from God's holy word. God is always faithful to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of the word. Jesus lives in a whole new way. Faith replaces self-securing, everyday conflicts of interest, instances of danger. All these fears are set aside by a singular focus on faith. When the disciples are tossed about on the sea and Jesus is at asleep in the ship, fear seems to multiply. Jesus, however, challenges them. Why are you afraid? Where is your faith? His challenge echoes through the ages. We hear it still. Why are you afraid? Where is your faith? I wonder. But now it's time to say our prayers. Let us begin with the prayers set aside for this day, Tuesday. Let us pray. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace and the new life you give us in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the love of our families, the affection of our friends, our strength and ability to serve your purpose today. This community in which we live and the many opportunities we have to give as we have received. 
God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them even as we have been served in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for those closest to us, family, friends, neighbors. We pray for refugees and women, men, and children without homes. We pray for the outcast and the persecuted and those from whom we are estranged. On this day, Tuesday, we pray for the church in Africa. Holy God, we turn to you with joys and concerns upon our hearts. We are distressed when we can't be together with those we love. And yet when we turn to you in prayer, we're humbled by the awareness that you know our heart's content. You hear our prayers before we speak. And you are always working for good in the world. So we bring to you our concerns. We pray for those who's extra, who's extra isolated during this period by living in nursing homes, rehabilitation centers, hospitals, assisted living communities, detention centers, and prisoners. Bless each with your spirit that they may know your companionship and comfort. We pray for all who are in the medical profession, caring for patients under extreme circumstances. Especially, we name our members, Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Molly, Tilda, Emiko, Camila, Pat's daughter Toby together with her husband Boyd. Bless them with abundant grace that others will know you through their care. We pray for those whose lives have been disrupted by death and who are learning to live in a new way while being under stay-at-home orders. The family of Eva, Joyce mourning her friend Peter, Mickey's friend Kathy mourning her mom, those mourning Fred's death in Denver, Tessie and Concha. We lift up the Navajo Nation and the New Mexico Pueblos where many deaths have occurred and many families are mourning. And we remember also those dislocated by flooding in Michigan, including Judy's brother. We pray for all whose circumstances are made more difficult due to this health emergency. Abel and Esther with treatments scheduled, Ruth's brother Ed, Decky's son Victor, Carlos's aunt Susana in Spain, all recovering from illnesses. We pray for those who suffer from undiagnosed pain, Margaret, Esther, Carla, our elders at home, Lena, Richard, Victor, Gil, Adolf, Jesse, all who suffer from loneliness, those who cannot understand this COVID-19 world, and all caregivers, including those who can no longer care for their family members. And we pray in gratitude for our church leaders, our pastor, elders, and deacons, the leaders from Presbytery, Synod, and National Church. Bless each leader and their efforts to keep our churches whole and safe. And we pray for ourselves. Help us today and every day to be sensitive to your guidance, confident in your abundant grace, and strong in faith. Use us to expand mercy and justice today and help us to forgive even as in Christ you have forgiven us. Receive these names, receive these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now, my friends, go into this day with a hopeful heart, for you are a child of God, and God has planned to bless others through you today. Until we pray again, Live peaceably with all.